Now let's dive into our track and see how we can elevate it from an amateurish demo to a polished, professional, radio-ready piece. Crafting a melody isn't just about selecting the right notes. Unfortunately, our current tune has the same appeal as a forgettable movie line. We have a G and a G sharp playing at the same time. Here it is how it sounds like. It's not great. It should be... Let's change the drum part in the verse. In our song's blueprint, definitely need some work. Adding more tension on this last chord. Not only do lyrics need to convey meaningful words. Our lyrics dive deep into this bleak reality. They speak of longing, of a distant memory when the world was alive with color and emotion. A great arrangement craves more contrast. Along the way, I'll highlight common pitfalls and mistakes that could make your tracks sound unprofessional. Let's keep the show on the road. Now that we've got the right flow for our song, it's time to look at the sounds we're using. Drum sounds can really define a song's style, so we need to pick them carefully. Our current drum sounds don't quite suit our track. Depending on the kind of music you're making, you might use drum samples, real drums, or a mix of both. For our song, I think we could do with some real drums and maybe mix in some samples later on. male e sono accordato alto, dovresti abbassare la nota. Ok, fermo lì. Fammi provare un attimo lo spenza prima. Definiamo un attimo così poi so cosa fa. Provi a mettere più grosso il rullante. Ecco, ecco, una roba così. È bello se finisce quando il riser finisce, cioè quindi se finisce sull'ultimo sedicesimo della... Fa sentire...
questa era molto buona, secondo me. Cosa dici? Sì, sì, vai l'ultima. We've got the real drums now. Let's also work on the synth sounds, which could be better. Let's substitute the synth sounds that we're using with better synth sounds. I'll take the MIDI that I have, these MIDI tracks here, and I'll just feed them into the synth I want to use for each specific part. As for now, we've used some plugin synthesizers, but I think that using some external instruments, whether analog or digital, would benefit the results we get. For example, in this pad here, and also this one. I would use the virus TI. Let's do it. Here we are, we have added the virus TI tracks. Let's hear the difference real quick. This is the virus TI pad in the verse. And this is the one we had before. Sound is different, a bit more dreamy and a bit more mellow than the one we had before, I think. And the timbre itself is more realistic sounding. That's why I like it more. That's pretty much it about the verse. The chorus is the same thing. Here is the virus TI. And here is the previous synth we had. In this case, the virus TI we've added has a lot more high end so that it can cut through the chorus, which is a pretty dense part. I think I won't change other parts. This bass, I, I think it's it's cool enough. Also this one, it's, it's really, it sounds okay to me. Sounds snappy. It's... It's a part that needs to be in the background, so I wouldn't change it a lot. That's it, I think we're good with the synth. That's looking better now. It's time to add some unique sounds to make it pop. You could use samples and loops to add interesting sounds and textures, but they can end up sounding predictable and flat. Plus, I personally don't find it very fun trotting through samples to find the right ones. So, let's use this. This is a modular synth. I won't get into how it works just yet, but I promise I'll cover it in a future video. For now, let's use it to make some cool sounds for our song.
Now our song is really coming together. It's got the right mix of sounds, a good structure, and a unique vibe. Next, we're going to look at the performances. They're like the actors in our song. You could have a great melody and killer lyrics, but without strong performances, the song won't hit the mark. to check, yeah. I've recorded all the vocal parts and I've selected the best takes and created the final comps. Right now I'm going to play the parts as they are without any additional editing so that you can hear how they sound before we do the actual final pitch correction and timing editing so that they can feel very polished and well produced. I've finished editing the vocals, I've added pitch correction and fixed some slight timing discrepancies between the backing vocals and the doubles and the main vocal track. Here it is how they sound. This is sounding better, but the track feels a little loose in places. Some notes are not precisely timed, and instruments occasionally seem out of sync. It's missing the seamless flow we're aiming for. In a modern production like this one, filled with synths and MIDI programmed instruments, even a stellar real drum performance can feel a bit off if it's not perfectly timed. Why is that, you ask? Because all the quantized elements make any human imperfections easily noticeable. And don't get me wrong, it's not about the drummer's performance, which is awesome. 
It's about matching the precision of the digital world. So how do we fix this? We can either edit or even re-record some parts to ensure that everything is bang on time, creating that wall of sound effect we associate with top tier production. This is often an overlooked detail, but top notch production quality always involves meticulous attention to timing and tight performances. If your production falls short, chances are this detail is missing. There are a few spots where tracks are a bit inconsistent on a tempo perspective, so we need to fix that. If we listen to the drums and the guitar part, the arpeggio part, kind of. You hear that the guitar part is a bit behind the tempo, so it's a bit late, whereas the drums are a bit ahead of the beat. First of all, it's better if we put all of them in grid because we have a lot of synths and programming so everything is in grid basically and we can't leave important parts like these ones not gridded because they will sound um, like they are not in sync and so if I if I correct this real quick and interestingly enough it's only the kicks that are a bit earlier and they are a tiny bit earlier, so this level of precision only is only achievable with a computer and with manual editing. Of course, drums are very important in this, so as soon as a drum hit is a tiny bit early or a tiny bit late, you can really hear it. Whereas vocals, guitars, synths, and other instruments in, in general are less easy to spot when they are not playing exactly on grid. That's just a normal part of polishing the recordings that we've got. So let's listen to how they sound right now. Much better, right? I think I will grid this part because it sounds cooler if I grid it. Okay, I've edited everything that needed to be edited. The timing now is pretty good throughout the whole song. Here it is. It's like watching a Spielberg masterpiece. Well, almost, but we're not done yet. We still have to put the final touches before it's ready to be served. We've come a long way in refining our track, adding more layers and smoothing out the rough edges. We're getting closer to that pro sound. However, our journey isn't over yet. There are still more depths to explore and important enhancements to make. That said, I'm excited to hear your thoughts and reactions on what you've seen up to now. Have you discovered any new techniques? Is this video series aiding or inspiring your songwriting or music production? Feel free to share your progress and insights in the comments below. Let's continue learning from each other. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and ensure you're subscribed so you don't miss the final leg of our journey in part 3. There, we'll reveal the final transformations and the lesson learned from that humbling experience I mentioned in part 1 of this video series. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!